My name is Ricardo Gutierrez, and I teach at Columbus Elementary School, fifth grade, and I'm the bilingual teacher that teaches English uh, for two uh, classes. Uh, I'm presenting my teaching event, which consists of a weekly lesson that we do here to build up vocabulary and comprehension. It is important for my students who are all ELLs to uh, build up their vocabulary and reading comprehension so they can understand what they're reading. They are very fluent speak Spanish readers, but we want them to become fluent and English speakers, English readers. My lesson consists of uh, five steps that we do uh, part of the lesson each day. The first part is Day one, uh, we have the lesson introduction. Students read the story silently. Then I ask background uh, questions to the students to see if they have any knowledge of the topic or the main idea of the story. Then I read the story to the students and the students listen for word pronunciation. And then finally we do the echo reading. They read after me. On day number two, we do a cognate word list. Cognates are words that sound and spell and mean the same in both languages, English and Spanish. And then we do a foldable artifact. The foldable artifact is like a formative assessment, which uh, starts to let me know if the, the students are uh, learning the meaning of the vocabulary words. On day three, I do a PowerPoint, which consists of my words. Uh, I break them down into syllables, I do a translation into Spanish, and then we have visuals, and finally we do TPR, which is body movements which represent the meaning of the word. On day four, my students write a short summary of the reading lesson, and they are, they try to write as many vocabulary words in their, in their summary. And in day five, which is my summative assessment, I do a vocabulary quiz and then we create sentences using vocabulary words. This is perhaps the uh, higher on my Blue's taxonomy uh, level uh, project, which is creating their own sentences, which uh, for very low English speakers, uh, it is quite a challenge for them. So in a while, we're going to be doing this. The way with, that I want to be working with my students is going to be with, uh, we're going to do short clips, short sections, because condensing a weekly lesson into 10 minutes is quite an ordeal. So you're going to be looking at short sections or short clips, short scenes of our lessons, and uh, in which you're going to see student involvement and student participation, which is very important for my students to be doing in order to create a an environment which uh, promotes English and English speaking. Uh, right now my students are engaged in silent reading just to read and get a, a hint of what the main idea of the uh, lesson is about. Okay, can someone uh, give me a, tell me what the the story or the lesson was about, or if you know the main idea. Uh, Victor. How, how they live the Native Americans? Okay, how the Native Americans live? How they eat the salmon? How they eat, they use uh, salmon as their main meal. The cycle of the salmon? The cycle, very good. Someone else? Who else Genesis has some? A what? Genesis oh, she gave you an answer. Someone else wants to say something else about what's the main idea? Okay. And it, it, it's about a, the cycle of the salmon, you're right. And it also, also it was a way of life of our American ancestors. They, they needed to fish for salmon, and it was their main meal. Okay. Thank you. Okay, this next section, I'm going to be reading the story to my students. 
and they will listen for how I pronounce the words because it's very important for them to learn how to, the pronunciation of the words. Salmon Season by Deborah Gettner. Fishing is a way of life for many people. Many people have built their lives around fishing. This was especially true of the Chinook people, Native Americans who lived along the Pacific coast. During the 1800s, they built their lives around the salmon, the salmon run. Salmon are hatched in fresh water such as rivers, lakes, and streams. Salmon Season. Salmon Season. By Deborah Gettner. By Deborah Gettner. Fishing is a way of life for many people. Fishing is a way of life for many people. Many people have built their lives around fishing. Many people have built their lives around fishing. This was especially true. This was especially true of the Chinook people. Of the Chinook people. Native Americans who lived along the Pacific coast. Native Americans who lived along the Pacific coast. During the 1800s, During the 1800s, they built their lives around the salmon. They built their lives around the salmon. The salmon run. The salmon run. Salmon are hatched in fresh water. Salmon are such as rivers, such as rivers, lakes, lakes, and streams, and streams. They hurry to the sea as soon as they can swim. They hurry to the sea as soon as they can swim. I start on day number two on, on my lesson. My students are doing a cognate list, and they're looking for words that sound and are spelled and mean the same in English and Spanish. This will help them then to make the translation from one language to another, or the bridging that we call it, from their native language into the English language. This will help them further understand what they're reading. This next group is working with their foldable and they're finishing up, you know, making the predictions, writing the word, making the translation, drawing a picture and, and writing a more definition of the word. Okay, this next part is on the start of day three in which we do, uh, we use our head projector and I do use my interact pad as technology helpers to uh, further our understanding of the vocabulary words. We are going to be looking at the word, breaking it into syllables, and then saying the translation into Spanish. Then we're going to see a visual of the word, and then we're going to do a TPR, or a body movement that resembles the meaning of the word. Okay. The first word is universe. Universe. slide of the universe, our bo heavenly bodies, or a constellation. And our TPR for universe is going to be our whole universe. Okay. Our body movements. Very good. Now, let's look at our next word. Orbits. Orbit. 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 In Spanish, orbitas. Orbitas. Very good. 
And this is the slide that resembles something that is orbiting. And our TPR is going to be orbiting. Okay. Therefore, my students will be writing a short summary of the reading lesson. And they will probably write two or three sentences to complete the summary. On my final day, my fifth day, we do a summative assessment. Uh, I give them a, a set of words, vocabulary words that we've been using all week in a word template. And then they need to form a, or find three words that relate to each other and put them sequentially. And after that, they will write three sentences or they will create their own three sentences as one of their final assessments. This is done working with partners, and it's a, a cooperative exercise. And the other final assessment consists of a vocabulary quiz in which students uh, have learned or tried to uh, best answer their the questions using the vocabulary that they've been looking for the whole week.